Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So to the dozen or so people that have been following my arrow build up to this point, we're, we're moving on to part three. And part three, um, this one had a little bit of a learning curve for me for sure. Um, but we are attaching some fletching on and we're using that sinew that we processed in the last vid video to attach it. So this was my first arrow, very, very rough, very crude. I actually just did my second arrow, turned out way, way better. Uh, even just like, processing the feathers I learned a lot uh, compared to uh, this first one now so these were the cedar shafts that we did in the first video and uh, all I did was I actually just put some boiled linseed oil uh, on it just to give it a nice protective coating and I did make some some knocks uh, in here so um, this one was my biggest knock this one was my most crooked knock and this one that I'm showing you right now is actually my most perfect knock. So, so all I did for the knock is I actually just took a little saw like this and just cut it. And then I could actually use the teeth to uh, hog out the hole a little bit. Took a bit of sandpaper and just cleaned it out uh, very easy. Is, is this knock going to last? Who knows? Time will tell. So anyways, I will show you guys how I uh, despine these feathers. So basically I already have the feathers I am going to be using for this build but I, d I definitely want to show you guys uh, what I did here to despine these. So I haven't harvested my own turkey or my own goose um, so basically I had this is one thing I did have to buy and that was feathers. Um, now these are either turkey or they are goose. Uh, believe it or not there are white turkeys what I've, I've learned. So anyways I'll show you guys what I did here to uh, despine uh, de them. Now the first time I actually, you'll see there's a, a vein right here in the middle. And actually what I did was, I all I did was I took a little slice there and I basically split this in half. But what I found on my first arrow is that stuff's way too thick. Now what you'll see is on this one, you see how paper thin this is and how nicely fl flexible this is? Well, there's a, there's, there's a way of doing it to, to get that. So. Basically, I'll just start at the top because we're really going to be using mainly this section right here, about five inches. But you want this section right here. Seems to be the best. So, also when you get your bag of arrows, you want to split the left left hand, uh, like left wing feathers, with the right wing feathers. Basically, you want three left wing feathers um, or three right wing feathers. Um, basically just look at the way they they point it doesn't you don't really need to know if they're left or right just match them it's the biggest thing all right I know this knife's a little bit overkill but this is what I have in my garage so all I did was I went down just a little bit here and I put just a little slice just to get it started uh, under there and then you just start peeling sometimes you have to do you have to re-slice it but generally, it starts coming pretty easy. And there we go. That's nice feather for fletching. So we're actually going to cut these down to uh, down to size. So basically what I did here is um, just cut a little bit off there. Because that's, that's the end that we're going to be using to uh, cinch it down. So what I, do, what I did is I pulled that little tab right off the end of the ruler. And we bring it to about the five inch mark because I want a five inch fletch. So I know that's my five inches. So we're going to cut this right here. Maybe just a little bit more. There we go. And now I got my other tab there that I'm going to be cinching down. So do that with the other two feathers. All right, now that we have our three feathers cut down, it's time to start attaching them to our shaft. Um, so basically what you're going to do, you want to have two of the same color fletch and one different color fletch. And then so the, the different color one, you're actually going to just going to put uh, 90 degrees from your knock. Um, so this will be your, uh, your alignment because this is what you're going to have on the outside of your bowstring. So like I said, we will be using sinew. I use uh, four strands for the top, four strands for the bottom wrap, and uh, so I'll show you how we get started here. 
Um, now I am going to be using a technique that the Native Americans used to use to get to get this ready. Um, as a dry state, um, it doesn't really work that great. What you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to wet it and chew it a little bit. I know it sounds pretty gross, but it's honestly not that, not that bad. So, okay. And I chew it until it starts getting a little bit soft. You don't want to chew it too much because if you do it too much, the natural glue that that develops off of this um, will be gone. It won't work as good. So you'll feel it. I mean, a little practice, right? So there you go. So it's chewed up. I pull it out, and then. Um, you don't need to tie this off. You don't need to do any of that kind of stuff. The natural glues, and once it dries, it actually binds really, really tight. So this is, like I said, this is just such a super fiber. It's ridiculous. You know, I like to come, you know, just a couple inches down from the from the, the to, uh, top of the arrow. And then. I'll get this started. This just do one wrap and then just see your alignment. See how see right here. I'm not even close. So at this point, I'll just adjust. There we go. And then I use that one piece, all for that just that one feather. There we go. Now we're gonna spin this, and we're gonna put the other two on. Now usually what I, I didn't do it this time, but usually uh, as I'm tying one, I'm chewing on one of these. I told you I, did, I was doing I do a fourth one that's because I use the fourth one totally wrap it all of it up and kind of lock into place there we go that's the top wrap now we're gonna cinch the bottoms together my wrap I actually make one long strand and the way I do that I just attach a bunch uh, with little square knots and then um, just cut the little tag ends off right off all right soften them this up so apparently I messed up and I didn't film it my wrap at all but basically all I did I took that big piece of sinew and I start working in between the veins just kept going 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 you didn't want to make leave too much space because then what it does it ends up pinching it uh, and then you'll have really ugly looking feathers but um, wasn't too bad one spot I'm probably not too happy with but anyway so we're gonna take this and we're gonna just gonna set it out in the Sun for half an hour and uh, then we'll get back to it and I'll show you guys how to finish this. All right, so she's all dried up. I mean, you could just leave the fletch in like that and make it a big flu flu. Um, but I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to cut it down, trim it down a bit. The bigger, the bigger fletching will actually keep this a little bit uh, more stable, especially if you don't have your arrow tuned properly. Whereas the smaller fletching will uh, just, it'll perform a lot better I'll go farther so there we go that's nice and do it against the grain I the first few times I did it with the grain and it didn't work out very well 
go. There we go. Doesn't look too shabby. Um, I've definitely done worse. Getting a little bit better, so I'm pretty happy with that. So now, you can just leave it like that, but the problem with sinew is if it gets wet again, it just loosens off and then this is all gonna come apart. So in nature, if I was, I was out in the bush right now, and this was a survival situation, uh, what I'd be doing is I'd be um, heating up some pine pitch and I'd be coating all this with pine pitch and then when we do the arrowheads, same thing, I'd be coating and locking in with pine pitch. But seeing as I don't have pine pitch here, what I'm gonna do for now, um, and this is just, just to give it a waterproof layer, so I'm just going to put a little bit of Gorilla Glue in here. So, let's coat it. Curious to see how uh, resilient these uh, arrows are going to be. I'm sure, I don't think they're going to last that long. I could be wrong. I'm definitely a little uh, nerve-wracking. I think my first couple shots. I'm definitely excited though. But, I mean, I'll be a little bit sad if they break after the first shot. I uh, did put quite a bit of work into these um, I think they'll last a little bit longer than that so anyways we'll let this dry and then we're gonna get on to part four and that's gonna be uh, the arrow tips now I am doing two three different tips one's gonna be no tip I got a smaller arrowhead and then I got a bigger arrowhead they're gonna be attaching and I will show you guys in the next episode uh, how to do that so for all the people that have been following me since the the first episode uh, thanks Hope you guys are enjoying this build, and uh, let's get this thing finished up, and we'll shoot one downrange. Thanks for watching.